right, so round two, here we go. Jorge Masvidal. Uh, he recently did an interview with Ariel Helwani and uh, was kind of disparaging toward Brett Okamoto for some reason, going and uh, talking to Kamaru and giving Kamaru the, uh, the shine, mm. if you will. Uh, he was kind of talking, and Ariel kind of gave away a little smile that I kind of gave away everything. He said, Kamaru's just contacting you guys, begging to go on the show, hoping anyone will listen to him. And Ariel just started smiling, didn't confirm or deny it, but you can't hide that devil behind that devilish smile, Ariel. We know what happened. Um, but yes, so no Dahlia Sometimes here. Actions speak louder than words, right? Honestly. Um, Ariel, by saying, listen, I'm not going <laughs> to say anything. You told us exactly what we need to know, which is Usman needs a platform <laughs> to, to get his message out. Because as we talked about in the last segment, he's having a tough time building his star. 100%. Um, and so we have Jorge Masvidal here who's sitting here. Now, what, do we want, what does he want to do, right? Obviously, Colby Covington just left AT&T. Um, no, he did not. He AT&T. Left AT&T. He went to Verizon, actually. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Went to T-Mobile. On one. That's it. He's the T-Mobile arena. He's moving in. He's, like, training in the basement now. Um, so AT&T has gone from the American top team. Uh, Colby's got the cancer, as he likes to call him. Uh, and – Interesting to see uh, Colby was there for 10 years uh, and then Jorge being there for 12. You know, if you want to call it seniority, if you want to call it the guy who's calling everybody in his own camp out, I mean, like you're talking mm-hmm. about the women, like here's something that Moaz Vidal was really driving home. Um, he also revealed uh, Kamara Usman was asking for millions of dollars uh, to fight him and everything. Um, I don't know where you want to start with either of the Colby aspect or the, the money, but go ahead and just tackle either one of those. I yeah, let's start with, with Mr. Jorge Masvidal, and we'll get to Covington. It's hard to have – there's obviously overlap, but, I mean, mm. you know, when you have two guys who are both inching for number one contender spots, there obviously is going to be overlap. But we're going to get to Colby specifically a little bit later in the show. As for Jorge, I mean, he's right, right? He acknowledged – and it seemed like he listened to everything that Usman said in the Brad Okamoto interview, which was actually a little bit surprising to me. Mm-hmm. I thought that he's like, oh, why am I going to waste my time listening to this guy? But right. he was, he if you listen to that listen. interview, he was quoting like everything that, that Usman said. And I'm like, yeah, all right. And what bothers me a little bit about, about Jorge is that he refuses to acknowledge anyone else by name. He calls them all that guy or that other guy or you know who or, or who. Who's that? Or Who's the, that the, all the time? Or the, the brittle one, the mm-hmm. fragile one. Right. And so it's tough. I think for Jorge, because, and he takes everything super personally as well. It's like, mm-hmm. listen, Jorge, I think you're probably better off trying to build, and I know he doesn't want to give any spotlight to anybody else, but it might actually be in his best interest to give a little bit of shine, be, given his stardom, to his opponent if he's confident that he can beat them, because it's just going to draw more eyeballs to the fight, right? So if he's not mentioning, if he's just saying, oh, that guy and that guy, well, you and I as hardcores know that that guy and that guy means Usman and, and Covington, right. but the rest of the world may not. So how are you going to book a fight when you technically don't have any trash talk against him without taking <laughs> it out of context? Cause you never once dropped his name. Right. Right. Jorge Masvidal, I think as it pertains to, um, to Kamaru Usman, whether that is his next fight, I think it, I don't, it, probably, I mean, it would make the most sense, but that would just make the most sense logistically. Whereas if you're, if you're Masvidal, your next fight is probably with somebody who's of bigger stature and can make you more money. Because if you are an A-side, why not go against somebody that will make you a B-side? That, right? That's, that's kind of what you're going for. So maybe against Connor, he would still be, excuse me, the A-side against Nate. But at least that has more guaranteed eyeballs than it does fighting for a world championship. And if he already considers himself the champion because he has a nice BMF belt, then maybe that's why he's you know, more reluctant to, to fight a guy like, like Usman. And then against Covington, there's no real need, right? We know mm-hmm. that Jorge Masvidal, if he says, I want to fight the champ, if he says that today, Dana White's booking that fight. Right. So he doesn't necessarily need to have another qualifier, a tune-up, or a, or a number one contender bout because as far as he's concerned, he is the number one contender. 100%. And when I go and look at someone like Jorge, it's like there's a, there's a triumvirate of options here. You can, the obvious movements, BMF, uh, rematch against Nate Diaz and, uh, and then you got Kamaru Usman for the actual title then you got this money fight against uh, Conor McGregor and a grudge fight against Colby which he also said in the interview that he's not really that interested in, in, in as much anymore mm-hmm. he's like oh he's gonna fight again and he won't beat any top competition I won't have to end up facing him interesting right. to hear coming from him I don't know if I, I don't want to nor do I think that it's a sign of maybe weakness or timidity to fight him or or just not wanting to give him clout. 
or a combination. But interesting to see how he's being extremely dismissive. Before he's like, oh, he'll, I'll catch him, like whatever, whatever. But now it's just prove it almost. Like, oh, you're not good enough. Prove you can come mm. and fight me. Interesting to see how that's transpiring. Now, if I'm him, you could defend the BMF belt against Nate. Is, there, is that as much of a draw? You were kind of really winning that fight. Where was it going to go when it got into the championship rounds? Not sure. But I'm not as interested in that fight. Um, Kamaru Usman against him, I think that's just a nightmare matchup. Honestly, I don't like that matchup for The thing Jorge. is, it's a terrible matchup for both of them, really. Because if you're Usman, you know, we, we would probably assume that he is able to implement his dominance in wrestling, chain wrestling, takedowns, grappling, and all that. But if you're a guy, so in that respect, uh, it's a terrible matchup for Jorge. However, let's not forget who Jorge trains with, right? Jorge trains with Yoel Romero. You won't find a bigger, better wrestler who's, you know, as explosive and intimidating and muscular and bodied up as that guy. So if let's say he's practicing his scrambles and he can he's do it over right 25 minutes, drill. Yeah. right. Then I, then maybe it becomes a very quickly becomes a terrible matchup for Usman because let's face it as well as Usman has done in his last few fights, standing up against a, a clinical and ruthless, aggressive Colby striker. Colby is not Jorge. Colby is definitely not. Jorge. We're not talking about volume strikes here. We're talking about, you know, as you, as you mentioned, strategic aggression, like, j- like Justin Gaethje has, where he's going to hit you very, very hard for a very long time. And if you can't take him down, it's going to be a very either long night, depending on how good a short is, night. very short night, because you might be going to sleep. And this is the thing is, Kamaru's style of wrestling is very much bullish, right? He bowls you up against the cage, grabs onto you, like your back's against the cage. He, then he clamps onto you, or he takes a double mm-hmm. leg and drives to the cage. It's not an explosion and scoop you and slam you. So right. that is much more of a grinding uh, uh, wrestling style. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how that, that balances with Jorge and his great takedown defense. Like, this guy's no scrub when it comes to that. But yeah. I bring all of that up to really kind of tie it home and say, hey, look, Jorge's most exciting matchup to me is against Conor McGregor. Is mm. it the most realistic one? Probably not, but it's a BMF title. Like, why not, right? So, right. For me, I think there's one thing we have to remember in all of this. Let's not forget the last time Jorge fought a wrestler, he knocked him dead in five seconds. Right. So if Usman's going to be afraid and wants to shoot right away, which I doubt he will, but let's say, hypothetically, let's not forget. He wouldn't. He's got some ruthless knees to... to 100%. You know, I think it's one of those things where if you recklessly, if see, for example, this is this is how you could ke- get caught with a knee coming in, is if mm-hmm. Jorge catches him and he goes into default mode and goes for a takedown, and it's like, mm-hmm. oh, that's what you're yeah. going for, bomb. That's different. You have to catch him on the feet. I'm not saying Kamaro can't be caught. Colby hit him for God's sake, but they were in a striking matchup. I think they had, didn't wrestle, and people were expecting them to grapple. There was none. This right. is a completely different matchup in that respect, but. I do. I, I think it's a nightmare matchup for both of them, depending mm-hmm. on who, like that. Those first round, that first round, maybe round and a half, first ten minutes of that fight is really going to dictate who has confidence moving forward in the fight in terms yep. of how many takedowns were attempted and stuff or successfully completed. So let us know in the in the comment below. I'm actually really interested to see what you guys think about Kamara yeah. versus Jorge. Let and let us below. know if you want us to do uh, an in depth breakdown of that fight once it gets announced because we probably will and right now yeah. we're just doing you know tight quicker segments but we there's a lot of meat to get into there and we'd be happy to discuss that fight for a long time 100 percent. all right round two done.